Hi, this is a video on the total disassembly of a Glock pistol. Only three tools are required for the maintenance of the Glock pistol. A 332nd inch pin punch, a screwdriver with an eighth inch blade, and a needle nose pliers. We'll start with the slide. After field stripping your Glock, the first part that we remove is the slide cover plate. To remove that, you have to push down or toward the muzzle on the spacer sleeve right here. You're pushing against the firing pin spring and this uh, sleeve actually comes into engagement with the plate back here so you have to give it enough space to come off. Place the muzzle end down on the bench. Put your thumb over the back. There's going to be two spring loaded parts the extractor depressor plunger and the firing pin assembly and you don't want those to come flying out so put pressure on the spacer sleeve push forward with your thumb keep those parts captive there's the slide cover plate and now we can remove the firing pin assembly and the extractor depressor plunger assembly The next part we remove is the extractor. Press the firing pin safety and it will come right out. Then you can remove your firing pin safety. You'll see there's a little spring right here. Don't lose that spring. Unless you're polishing this, you probably want to keep that right in there. And you give it a little pressure and give it a slight counterclockwise turn, and you'll hear it click in. Just like that. And I recommend that you purchase a spare uh, firing pin safety plunger spring, because that's a part that's easily lost and that will disable your Glock. Except for the sights, the only part left on your Glock slide right now is the firing pin channel liner. And that part is right in there. You can see it. If I shine a light in there. That stays in there. Uh, generally, that part is destroyed if you remove it. Glock can sell you a tool to remove it, but... Uh, the armorers recommend that you just leave that in there and it's important that that stay clean and dry there should not be any oil in that channel whatsoever if you decide that you want to break down the firing pin assembly into its component parts you do that by grabbing the firing pin spring between your thumb and forefinger and you're going to pull it back until the firing pin spring cups are released there are two pieces you'll see them come off right here and these are another example of a part you probably want spares for they're not expensive but if you lose one of these little things then your gun will be disabled there's the firing pin spring and the spacer sleeve comes off the firing pin this firing pin and the rest of the parts should be completely dry there should not be any lubrication whatsoever. Now I'll show you how to reassemble your slide. Place the spacer sleeve over the firing pin. Take the firing pin spring, place it over the firing pin, and now we'll use the slide as a tool to get the firing pin spring cups back in there. To do this you're actually putting the spacer sleeve into the slide, the rear end of the slide backwards with the uh, firing pin <coughs> off to the side, the sear part off to the side. Then you can stand it up 
and get a grip on the spring pull down and these firing pin cups go with the little end down or toward the rear of the firing pin and all you need is three hands to put this on like that Okay, the extractor goes into the slide as it's shown here. Lay the slide on its side. Put the extractor in. Hold it with your finger. Roll it over on its top and you can put the firing pin safety in and when you press down The extractor becomes captive. Now we can go ahead and put the extractor depressor plunger into the slide and how this is done is you just remember that metal goes to metal, plastic to plastic on the slide cover plate so you don't get it in backwards. then go ahead and put in the firing pin assembly and now you're ready to finish up with the slide cover plate place the slide on the bench muzzle in down start the slide cover plate in the channel hold it in place with your thumb and starting with the spacer sleeve press down until it gets on that far then go ahead and press the extractor plunger and you'll be able to put it on the rest of the way it'll click into place and the slide is reassembled okay moving right along we'll do the receiver now and there's an important thing to uh, make note of here the locking block pin which is the smaller of the two is the first pin that you remove and it's also the first pin that you replace normally things are done in reverse order this is the exception so you remove the locking block pin now to remove the other pin you actually place the punch in your left hand if you're right even if you're right handed take your right uh, thumb and forefinger and grasp the slide stop you're going to want to wiggle it forward and back because there's a groove in the trigger pin and you're going to have to relieve that before it'll drift out and you'll know when you have it don't ever pound on this thing or or force it and if it does get jammed in there if the spring gets jammed in the groove you'll want to push back from the other side to clear it it comes out rather easy now you can remove the slide stop then you can remove the locking block and you do that working on the left side so you don't interfere with the trigger bar you don't want to damage this when you're prying sometimes when these guns are new uh, it takes a bit of force to get this out you might want to use a screwdriver this one's been uh, disassembled a couple of times so I'm working on the left side hold my thumb over it so it doesn't fly across the room remove the locking block and now we're ready to remove the small plastic pin that holds the trigger assembly into the receiver you can push this pin out from either side this one doesn't matter and take your tool and use upward pressure working from the left side of the receiver upward pressure on the ejector you'll carefully remove this entire assembly with the trigger and the trigger bar assembly 